Welcome to Effective Living Series. I'm Amos Kevin Annan, and today we are looking at the family. The family is where all of us have found our roots and our foundations. It's a place where values are formed, behavioral patterns are constructed. And for that reason, the family has been said to be the crucible or the womb of society. Every human being that we see around, whether functional or dysfunctional, comes from a family. And nobody is said to be a lone ranger. But what we see today is that the family is under stress, acutely being combated on all fronts. And therefore, we must intentionally work on our families for them to become functional. Otherwise, we would have a lot of dysfunctional homes. And so in this series, we're going to share with you five basic things that we believe that every family must pay attention to. The first one is for you to have a family, there must be harmony. Harmony provides you tranquil to be able to live, to develop, and to be nurtured. Many confuse a house with a home, but there's a marked difference between a house and a home. A house is a structure. The home is the experience, the environment that we create. And so a person can find the bus terminal very homely. Some can find the workplace very homely, whereas the structure that they call a house where hitherto had been considered as home may be hostile. So in a giving home setting, if you're building a family, instead of hostility, we bring harmony. Harmony helps people to live as humans. And human beings have a tendency of being humane. In other words, they are considerate of other persons. They care for what others do. In a society where people don't care what others think of them, we are prone to crisis. And for that reason, we choose between harmony and hostility. So create harmony for you to have a family. The second thing we also believe um, we can share with you for the construction of a family is friendship. Many individuals do not have friends. But where else can you have friends other than the home setting? Within the family, we are family because we are friends. We are friends because we pledge our loyalty to each other. I watch a beautiful movie, Stuart Little, and there's a snowbell in a house with a fluffy cat, and the, the boy in the house was looking for a, a sibling to play with, and the parents decided to bring a hamster to the house and this homestead was brought and Snowbell was threatened because he's always been enjoying all the booty and when this hamster was being introduced Snowbell decided to attack the hamster then the couple they picked the hamster and said to Snowball Snowball we do not eat family members in a family we've got to be friends and friends are very loyal to each other friends do not undermine each other but what we know is that friends can also hurt you. So nobody hurts you deeper than those who are closest to you. That is why the wounds of a friend can be trusted. And a friend heals you by hurting you. And when they hurt you, they mean to heal you. So friends have good will, not ill will, as the driver. So if we're going to build a, a family, we need to be friends. Spouses need to be friends with each other. Parents need to be friends with their children. Somebody will say, well, when you're a friend with them, won't they take you for granted? The question I will ask you also is, do your friends take you for granted? They don't, and yet you call them your friends. There's also a difference between I am your friend and I'm being friendly towards you. The two are not the same. You can be friendly towards people that are not your friends. Um, in the workplace, we see that. It happens so often. But we are talking about be friends. The third one is adjustment. In any given family, we are not the same. It's been famously said that all the fingers are not the same. Some may look alike, left-handed, right-handed. If you put them together, they may look alike, but they are not the same. Sameness is different from look alike. And in the family, we all have to adjust for each other. If we don't adjust, we would outrun each other, overtake each other, undermine each other, undercut each other, and take each other for granted. Let us adjust so that we can fit in. Look at me, my fingers. I'm trying to adjust. When I adjust, I fit them beautifully. 
They may overlap, but I make adjustments. So if you're a fast walker, you adjust so that those who are slow can catch up with you. We equally will encourage those who are slow walkers to accelerate their pace so that they can catch up with those who are faster. And so relationships and marriage and family life requires constant mode of adjustment. Husband adjusts his shadows to be able to pick children from school. Wife does the same to be able to help with chores. If we don't do that, we're going to hurt each other. The fourth one is conversations and communication. Today, we are washed with all kinds of devices, technological devices, and sometimes they serve as a threat rather than a tool. And we want to encourage you to use uh, communication conversations within your family. Conversations tend to be very informal and makes you vulnerable. Communication tends to be very structured and too much predictability is there. The last one is conflict. In every given family, conflicts cannot be wished away and anger comes. But be creative with your conflict. When conflict arises, you should do a thorough assessment of the situation and be able to solve it. Look, you get angry sometimes. I also get angry. But we don't, out of our anger, respond to each other. Otherwise, we'll say things that we'll regret. For Effective Living series, this has been a focus on the family with Amos Kevin Annan. Thank you for your time.